Hi, I'm Erin. Today, spring has sprung, at least for now. So it's time to get this big garden cleaned up and ready for planting on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Getting the outside gardens ready every spring is something that I look forward to. The sun is warm and the dirt is anxiously awaiting new life. But first, we have to clean off the remains of last year's crops. I don't clean off the outside gardens in the fall and there's a couple of reasons why. Mostly, I'm over it. <laughs> Just like the gardens, I'm ready for a period of rest and I need a break from the soil. Also, if you may have noticed that the wind blows just a little bit around here by leaving whatever plant matter is left in the gardens, as well as the landscape fabric, the soil has a better chance of staying in the garden and not being deposited all over the county. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through what it takes to get things cleaned up and ready for planting. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and join me as we start the beginning of the summer garden season and we can explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary with three videos per week. The biggest chore during cleanup is definitely the removal of the landscape fabric. It's stapled into the ground and although some of it has torn, most of it is still largely intact. The soil under it has remained undisturbed throughout the winter. It's much easier to remove the fabric once the dead plants are also removed. We start in the cabbage patch. It's pretty easy to pull everything out. The dead plants just get thrown to the side and will be dealt with later. Now that we have the plants out, the staples and the fabric can be removed. Just start on one end. Pull out the staples and roll up the fabric. Of course, some dirt and plant matter does get rolled up in the fabric, and that is just mostly blow-in that occurs during the winter. It's not a huge loss to the gardens, and it's easier to roll it up rather than try and clean it all off. A wheelbarrow is a great tool in the gardens, and today it gets used basically like a garbage can. Once we have the wheelbarrow full of landscape fabric, it can get dumped into the bucket of the tractor. The tractor bucket also makes a handy garbage can in this situation. Now plants like cabbage and broccoli can be tilled back into the soil, but the area that we grew the gourds in last year needs to be cleaned up a little better. See, one year I didn't clean up all the dead gourds, because there were hundreds of them, as there sometimes is with gourds. And I just figured, hey, it's organic matter, it can go back into the soil. Well, that was a mistake. I then had hundreds of tiny gourd plants trying to grow along with my beet seed. So, lesson here is, don't till in gourds or pumpkins either, as they will grow and be a total disaster. Once the gourds are picked up, the fabric can be removed, as well as the fabric underneath the broccoli, basil, Brussels sprouts, snapped cabbage, and Romanesco. Next on the to-do list is hardware removal. Things like stakes that are used to mark rows when seeding need pulled out. Tools also need picked up. Tools usually are removed in the fall, but it didn't happen last year. They need out of the garden now, so everything is gathered up and deposited outside of the gate. This is also a great time to pick up any trash. There's landscape fabric that is blown around, some pieces of shredded high tunnel plastic, as well as the occasional Gatorade bottle or just more trash that the lovely wind brought us. Now comes the fun part. While I was cleaning up, Mike was busy getting equipment ready. The brush beater is hooked up to the tractor and Mike decided that I'm qualified to brush beat the garden. It's basically a giant lawnmower. All the plant matter that is still in the garden is great for the soil, but in our climate, it won't break down super well or fast if it's left in big chunks. Brush beating also makes tilling easier. So round and round I go, and getting all the big chunks mostly broke up. I didn't crash the tractor or go through the fence, so that was a win. Now we can bring the tiller in and work the soil. We usually use the international tractor with the tiller attachment but the tractor is currently out of service with some pretty big tire issues. It might show up on the project list one of these days, but for now we have another tiller that goes on the John Deere 445. This is the one time of the entire year that we deep till the garden. If we were adding manure, we would have spread it on the garden before tilling and then worked it in. Typically we add compost or composted manure every other year, and this is our off year. It is important when tilling to make sure your soil isn't too wet. If you till when the soil is wet, it will actually compact the soil more and it'll damage your soil structure. 
so it's best to wait. A little dampness is okay, but if you make a ball and poke it with your finger and it doesn't crumble, the soil is too wet. Around and around, back and forth I go until the entire garden is tilled. There's still a few chunks of plant matter that you can see, but we have created a nice fluffy bed for our plants to grow. The garden looks so pretty, doesn't it? I just hate to walk on it and start putting stuff in the ground, but it's time to get growing. Onions and potatoes are always first on my list and they will get planted in the next couple of days. Before we plant anything though, we have to get the water working. We've already spotted quite a few breaks in the line and I'm sure there will be more once we turn the water on. But that's tomorrow's project and probably another video. Make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. Also like us on Facebook or Instagram today we posted a picture of our fourth set of twins born here on the ranch. Mike is back on Sunday with a video all about bottle calves. Thanks for joining me as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary on Our Wyoming Life.